بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which will be the vocabulary building but as usual before we do that let's revise what we have previously taken in the lesson as you see in this picture the father is talking to his son about yes you got that correctly he's talking to his son uh, about using the cell phone you remember when he punished his son by making him to contribute in the bill by paying yes one third of the bill so this is what we have taken in the last lesson also we took the uh, syllables in counting teen numbers it says here when counting teen numbers such as 13 14 stress the first syllable what is a syllable yes a single unit of speech it's a it's a part of the word all the whole word so again teen numbers such as 13 and 14 we stress the first syllable when we are counting but we, and when we are talking about quantity, time, or money, we stress the second syllable. For example, you say, I have $13. In 10 numbers, such as 10, 20, 30, 40, we usually stress the first syllable. But before we begin our lesson today, let's take some work workbook exercises regarding our previous lessons in this unit. So the first one is... Uh, here, read the descriptions of different people, different people, write these best, write the best word or phrase to describe each. So these are here descriptions and write what fits this personality. The first one is already done for you. Even though Brian is famous, he isn't unfriendly or arrogant. Isn't unfriendly. This is a double negative, which makes it a positive so you can say he is friendly he isn't unfriendly or arrogant he loves spending time in nature he always wears jeans or shorts and a t-shirt he likes to eat healthy food from the garden so Brian is down to earth Brian is down to earth he is humble he is a people person so let's begin number one Lee is the kind of person that will always tell you the truth. He doesn't like to play games or pretend. He never says things just to make someone feel good. He is honest and he doesn't hide anything. He always knows where you stand with him. So, this is Lee's personality. Lee is, what's the fitting description for Lee's personality? Is he adventurous? Is he loner, laid back, is he spontaneous, or is he straightforward? He, he says he is honest. Yes, that's correct. Lee is straightforward. What's in, on his mind, he will say to you. The second one, Fahad. Fahad likes to spend time by himself. He likes to spend time alone by himself. After school, he usually goes home and works on his computer. He likes playing computer games and watching films. He has a few friends at school, but he is the, but he is the happiest when he's alone. So now we know that Fahad likes to be alone. So Fahad is, you see here, down to earth is gone, straight forward is gone. So Fahad, Fahad is what? Yes, Fahad is a loner. Number three, Jason loves to try new things. He loves experiencing new things. Last year he went uh, last year he went whitewater rafting in Chile. Two years ago he climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. This year he's going to hike at the Appalachian Trail in the United States. He isn't afraid of anything. So Jason is what? He likes to do things in nature. So, Jason is, th that's correct, he's adventurous. He likes to go on uh, adventures. Number four, Peter. And notice here, adventurous is gone, down to earth is gone, loner is gone, straightforward is gone. So we have two left. We have laid back and spontaneous. So, number four, 
Peter is just the kind of person who plans things out. He usually makes a decision and immediately acts on it. So he just makes a decision this second and he acts on it without planning. Again, he usually makes a decision and immediately acts on it. For example, last week he really wanted to eat fish for dinner. So he got in his car and drove three hours to the beach and eat, uh, to eat at his favorite seafood restaurant. After dinner, he got back in his car and drove home. So he was craving for fish, so he started his car and drove three hours and ate at the restaurant and then came back without any planning, just in the spark of the moment. So what do we say about Peter? Is he laid back or spontaneous? Yes, that's correct. He is spontaneous. He, uh, do, he does stuff without planning. The last one, Jake, is a casual and relaxed person. Casual and relaxed. He's usually late, but he doesn't worry about it. He's a flexible person and likes to just go with the flow. He's very easy to be around because he's always smiling and relaxed. So, Jake is very good laid back. So now we are finished with this exercise. Let's jump to the uh, other exercise B. Match the parts from the, the sentences to make proverbs. You see here we have five sentences and we have, uh, we have other five sentences. Match them to make a proverb. You see the first one is already done. The apple with E doesn't uh, fall far from the tree. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It means that uh, you, you will be like, uh, like one member of your family. The apple doesn't fall far, doesn't go away from the tree. So the first one, number one, silence. Silence. Is it uh, A is golden? Is it B is the best medicine? C nothing gained? D is the best policy? Or if then never, then never. So number one, silence. Yes, that's correct. Silence A is golden. Silence is golden. Number two, better late, better late. Very good, it's with the letter F. You say better late than never. It means that you arrive to a place late or do a homework or a research late it's better than never doing it. It's better than never doing it. Number three, laughter. Laughter is the best med medicine. Nothing gained is the best policy. So what do they, what do they say about uh, laughter? Okay, very good. Laughter with B is the best medicine. What about number four, honesty? Honesty. Very good, with D, honesty is the best policy and nothing ventured goes with nothing gained. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Or as they say, no pain, no gain. It means that if you don't do anything, if you don't uh, uh, try to act on anything, nothing will happen to you. So you have to act to get what you want. This is another exercise here, see. Read the sentences, tick the correct mark, then type the verb, uh, the, then type of the verb used. Look at the auxiliary verbs to help you. So we have here the auxiliary verbs, uh, simple present or past, present or past, uh, present or past or past perfect, present or past or past progressive, present or past or past passive. You see, the first one is already done for you. The internet has changed the world. The internet has changed the world. This goes in the present pa or past or past perfect because has is past perfect. So let's begin. Number one, I am sending you a text message right now. I am sending you a text message right now. Now, so in which box does the tick go? Very good. Present or past progressive. Present or past progressive. I'm sending. Once you see the ing, you know it's 
progressive. Number two, Tom had already sent me an email. Tom had already sent me an email. What about this one? Yes, that's correct. It's the same as the first one, present or past or past perfect. Why past perfect? Because of the word had. Number three, Liana doesn't have an email account. Liana doesn't have an email account. This one is, yes, very good, simple, present, or past. Simple, present, or past. Number four, I was trying to call you last night. I was, I was, so now you know it's a past tense. I was trying, ing, focus on the ing here, to call you last night. So, in what category here? Yes, that's correct. It's a past progressive. Past progressive. Number five, computers are used all over the world. Computers are used all over the world. What about this one? Computer is used all over the world. He didn't mention who uses the computer. So, yes, that's correct. It's passive. It's passive. Computers are used all over the world. This is a passive because he didn't mention who uses the computer. Number six, how long have you had your cell phone? This is a yes no question, of course. How long have you had your cell phone? How long have you had had your cell phone? So this is a past perfect. Number seven, my laptop, my laptop was stolen yesterday. My laptop was was this is past. My laptop was stolen yesterday. Yes, that's correct. Who stole it? We don't know. My, stole, my, my laptop was stolen yesterday. The last one, uh, does uh, Sarah use message, messaging apps? Number eight, does Sarah use messaging apps? The last one is, of course, a simple present. A simple present. So this is the next exercise. Unscramble the questions, then match the questions and answer. So we have a scrambled question. We have to unscramble them, then answer. You can see the first one is already done for you. We have get, did, a smartphone, you. So the answer is, did you get a smartphone? It goes with the letter D. D, you say, yes, I did. So this is the example. Let's begin the first one. The internet has working been. The internet has working been. Let's unscramble it and choose whether it goes with A, no, I don't, B, yes, it was, C, yes, I have, no, I wasn't, no, I'm not, no, it hasn't. So let's do the first one. Very good. Has the internet been working? Has. The internet, choose the first auxiliary verb. Has the internet been working? G, no, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. The second one, use, you do a fax machine ever. Very good. Do you ever use a fax machine? It's the answer A, no, I don't. Do you? No, I don't. It's the same auxiliary verb. Number three. You, last night, texting were me. And then, of course, the question mark. Very good. Excellent. You're getting the hang of it. Were you texting me last night? Were you texting me last night? Of course, the answer is number E. No, I wasn't. What about number four? Closed the was account. Very good. We begin, always we begin with the auxiliary verb. Remember that. Was the account closed? And the answer is number B. Yes, it was. Always choose the same auxiliary verb. 
And we have the same thing with uh, question five and six. Are you using a messaging app? Have you uh, changed your password? Uh, the letter F, no, uh, no, I'm not. And the letter C, yes, I have. So let's jump to today's lesson, which is vocabulary building. We have this exercise. You will see these words in, in, the, in the reading on pages 12 and 13. Put each word into a category, category in the chart. So we have eight words, and you have this chart with three, uh, with three columns related to computers, something related to computers. Synonym for special, the word synonym, it means it has the same meaning or related to health. And we have these eight words, asthma, extraordinary, paramedics, unique, cyber, networking, posted, virtual. Let's begin. So these are the words. She said, and we will be reading them from the uh, text in pages 12 and 13, the same sentence. We'll be extracting them from pages 12 and 13 from the same sentence. In the sentence, she said she was having an asthma attack and couldn't breathe. Of course, the meaning of asthma, what is asthma? Asthma is a disease that affects your lungs. So now we know that asthma is related to health because it's a disease that affects your lungs. So now we crossed asthma. The second word, extraordinary, but, but at times the internet has been used to connect ordinary people in extraordinary ways. What's the meaning of extraordinary? It means very unusual, very unusual or remarkable. So in what category here? Very good. Extraordinary is a synonym for special. It's the same meaning as special. So we crossed extraordinary here. The third word, paramedics, paramedics, Finnish paramedics found 20-year-old Tara Lennon and gave her the medical attention, medical attention from, the, from like a hospital, medical attention she needed. So who, what do paramedics do? They provide specialist care and treatment to patients, to patients, sick people who have been involved in accidents, emergencies, or other crisis. So now we know that they are related to health because they work at hospitals. The third word, shaken by the encounter and determined to find his double, Patrick came up with a unique idea. Unique idea. I think now you know what does unique mean. What does unique mean? It means one of a kind or special. So now we know that unique goes in the special column. Next is the word cyber. 12-year-old Sean Redden from Denton, Texas was in on the internet playing a cyber fantasy world game. Is he, real, is he playing in the real world? No, of course. So what does cyber mean? Relating to or involving computers or computer networks, such as the internet. So cyber means playing on the internet, on your computer. So cyber is related to, yes, you guessed it right, related to computers. The next one is networking. You know this, of course. Using email, social networking sites, and instant messaging are ordinary ways that people connect. The meaning of networking, the linking of computers to allow to operate interactively. Networking, from the word network, it connects computers together. So now we know that uh, networking is related also to computers, just like cyber. What about posted? To post something. Let's read it. We have two sentences. He posted his own photo and description of the man he had seen in the subway. The second sentence, Patrick posted this message on the website. So we have two sentences, two examples. And they have the same meaning of the word. What does posted mean? To publish a piece of writing, an image, or other item of content online, typically on a blog 
or social media website or application. So to publish a writing or an image or a video maybe on social media or any an online website. So now we know that the word posted is related to, again, computers. Very good. What about the word virtual? Virtual, because uh, of course the word virtual is not in the text. So I'm as asking you, do you know what virtual means? Do you know what the, do you know what virtual means? Now you, you hear this word all the time, virtual, V R. Yes, virtual reality. So what does it mean, the word virtual? Not physically existing as such, but made by software to appear to do so. Virtual reality. It means not the reality itself. No, this is a made up, a virtual reality. So this one, of course, goes into the computer's uh, category. Check your answers with a partner. If you don't understand the meaning of a word, look it up in the dictionary. So check and compare your answers with your friend. And if you don't know a word, don't worry. Just look it up in the dictionary. And with that, we reach to the end of the lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Shadu ala ala anta astaghfirku wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.